Hello and welcome to today's anatomy question. I'm Lizzie Lassiter and today we have the wonderful pleasure of being joined by Mary Richards herself. Hi Mary. Hi Lizzie. It's great to have you back on the mat on the screen with us. Thank you. Yeah it's nice to still be on this side of the dirt. <laughs> So we're continuing with our essential alignment series, which is we're working through Mama's book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses. And today Mary is working with us on pose 20, which is supported shoulder stand, Salamba Sarvangasan. Um, if you like these videos, if you want more from us and our online courses, the place to go is experientialanatomy.yoga and sign up for our fun newsletter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Mary, all right. The idea of these videos is one idea, one concept about the pose that will help us befriend the pose or like the pose more because my thesis is the more we like a pose, the more likely we are to practice a pose. Exactly. And we tend to do the things that we enjoy, you know? Right. And it's easy to get into a, an asana rut on your mat. Yes. Especially if you are struggling with certain aspects of an asana uh, that have, that perhaps your practice of that pose has been informed by common mythology rather than functional joint placement. So what do you think of in terms of that with shoulder stand? Use blankets. Seriously, no one has 90 degrees of neck flexion. No, yeah, no one has that. Your typical individual has 55 degrees, mm -hmm. 50 to 60, which you just demonstrated Beautifully, Lizzie, there. This is typical neck flexion. Now, I'm a super freak. Okay. So, okay. if you look at me. Yeah. Yeah. It, I have about 70. But it's still not a right angle. If we can see clearly, your neck is not doing this. Exactly. And it's very important that we not practice neck stand, that we practice shoulder stand. Right. And what will happen if we don't create space for the the natural structure of our neck as well as the normal range of motion for the neck is we will do neck stand yeah and that creates all kinds of issues that are best left in the ether rather than in our tissues all right yeah that's really clear so i've set up my blanket stack behind me. I'm going to switch to the broader camera. And uh -huh. then when I do, maybe you can talk us through exactly how to make this setup. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. One moment. All right. So here I am in front of my stack of blankets. And how do you like to stack and how many should we use Mary? So we need to use three to five blankets. It really depends on the length of your neck as well as how much shoulder extension you have. Okay, so if we just take a side trip into the shoulder movements for a moment, this is shoulder flexion, this is extension. So our, we're in extension. So depending on how much shoulder extension you have, that can determine as well how high your blanket stack is gonna be. Personally, I think we start at five blankets and then we add or, subtract, or subtract based on feedback. I agree. And the thing is what I noticed is that for so many people, it's like five, if you're coming from a no prop world, five blankets sounds insane. But remember, it's not just about like supporting a little bit, it's literally about filling in the space of the neck. Exactly. And it's really important that we not push down into the back of the neck. 
because uh, disc injuries occur to the back and to the side. And so we're already predisposed to that type of disc migration, if you will. And then we're gonna go upside down and add body weight times gravity. It's, it's a recipe for neck injury. Yeah. So I know that five blanket sounds like a lot, but the thing is it's worth it because Shravangasana in my opinion isn't a pose that you just pop in and out of. You need to marinate in it a bit. And so I like to use five blankets and what I've witnessed over the years is a lot of folks will stack the blankets so that the edges are directly vertical. Right. And I prefer the blankets to be to have little baby steps to be angled slightly because it better mirrors the bony contour of the neck. Right. And you're more likely to distribute weight evenly across the shoulder. It's also less intimidating mm -hmm. because it reduces the height of the blanket stack just a little bit. Yeah. And you know, a millimeter separates heaven and hell. Yeah. So take those millimeters. Uh, and what I have underneath are these kind of foam blocks that I just have one layer of them because I only have five blankets. And so I wanted, I need a little more. So I practice with the four of those blocks like that. Uh huh. Um, all right. And then I like to put a bolster here for the landing pad. Sure. Yeah, and you can start at the wall, of course. The wall is a great place to start a shoulder stand because it adds that support. You can put your feet on the wall. So whatever kind of helps you get your pelvis up over your shoulders. Right. And the key is, too, when you're setting up into the pose, that you set yourself on your blankets in such a way that you have two to three finger widths between the top of your shoulder and the edge of the top blanket. Because if you set up too close to the edge, you'll roll off your blankets. Okay, so I'm going into a halasana and then I'm gonna fix my t-shirt, <laughs> fix my hair. <laughs> And you're really strongly rotating your biceps away from you. Okay. And think about opening the armpit chest region. There you go, yes. And you float the legs up. And press up through the dagger's tip of the breastbone. Try to stab the ceiling with the xiphoid process. Rolling the thighs in toward one another and pressing up between the second and third toes in the balls of the feet. And now are you able to swallow with ease? Yes. That's what you want. You know that your blanket stack is too low or too high if you cannot swallow and speak with ease. Uh, this is better. I needed to move like five millimeters further off. And it takes about three times. The first time you practice with blankets, it takes about three times to get that set up into your sweet spot. You just, you, you figure it out with practice. And see the intention of shoulder stand is to really open the lungs and create space for the belly organs. And so if open chest is the hallmark of the pose and you can't have an open chest if you're jamming down into your neck. What is happening in my, let's say my intestines right now? It feels like a lot of openness there. Yes, everything is, is migrating forward so toward your face and then down toward your head. Mm -hmm. And this is excellent to stimulate certain energies related to your organs 
like apana and samana because it gives the organs room to breathe, if you will. That's the traditional wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to add the science to it, what you're helping yourself with right now is the fluid dynamics of your lymphatic system as well as your circulatory system. Mm. Yes. I'm going to come down. Yeah, so you rest for a moment in a supported plow pose. And then when you ease yourself, when you roll out of the asana, rest with your feet on the floor and surrender to the props. Mm. And just give yourself time to absorb the effects of the asana. Mm, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I like to spend at least 10 minutes in shoulder stand. I know that seems like a long time for a lot of folks, but I enjoy a 10 minute Shravangasana. I also enjoy a 30 minute Shravangasana. Whoa. And then I like to rest on my props for up to five minutes. Cause it's not, this isn't a pose about speed. Hmm. How do your lungs feel? absolutely open and big yes yes i've heard your mom describe that sensation as the lungs falling open like umbrellas mm. and that's kind of the way i see it i see the diaphragm just relaxing open mm. Okay, that was fabulous, Mary. Mm. Okay, let me come see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what we should say, just to be prudent, is of course, this is an advanced pose. Do not be practicing this. Please don't practice this without checking with everybody first, like an experienced yoga teacher, like your medical team, Make sure this is appropriate for your body before you do. I mean, this is a big pose. This is one of the biggest poses that we have in yoga, right? Yeah, and it's really contraindicated for neck and shoulder problems. Of course. Okay. You know, and uh, if you have unmanaged high blood pressure or glaucoma, macular degeneration, if you're pregnant, if you're, if you're, in the moon club if you're mm -hmm. menstruating yeah. and i know that folks like to say well i it's just you know it's my period i'm i feel fine inverting but you know it's just the flow's going the wrong way it's just common sense yeah yeah it's like just you want that out not in yeah so Take the time, and if you don't have blankets, let's say you don't have any blankets, well, don't practice the full Sharvangasana. Practice a variation of Viparita Karani. Legs up the so, wall. We filmed, it's in the, it's the video before in this series. Yes, yeah, so practice a variation of Viparita Karani where the weight is on the upper back. Right. Rather than forcing the flexion in the neck because forcing the flexion in the neck, you're not gonna enjoy the residue of that. All right, Mary, such a joy as always. Tell us where we can find you on the internet. Uh, you can find me, uh, Yoga with Mary Richards on Insta and Facebook. And my new website will be up in a few weeks, which will be Yoga with Mary Richards. Uh, though for now you can look up Mary Richard yoga and you'll find me fabulous and the place to party for yoga anatomy fun is experiential anatomy yoga we'll see you there sign up for the newsletter there's always more goodies coming your way namaste Mary namaste Lizzie thank you so much my pleasure <laughs>